What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel for another tier list video. I don't think I've done one of these since last off season, so it's been a while. If you guys want to see more of these over the next couple of weeks, you know, leading up towards the start of the regular season, then be sure to show this video some love. We're going to be keeping it pretty simple with this one. I'm just going to be ranking all 32 NHL teams on where I believe they stand heading into the 2023-24 NHL season. We have five tiers that we are going to rank the NHL teams in those tiers. Our Stanley Cup contender, playoff team, wildcard team, mediocre, and basement. I will leave a link to this tier list down below in the pinned comment if you guys want to go put one together for yourselves, and then tweet me a picture of it if you do, because I want to see what your guys' list would look like. So with that being said, let's start out with the Anaheim Ducks, and I think I'm going to put them in the basement tier. I know a lot of you might think that they're going to take a step this year. Maybe they belong in mediocre, but they finished this past season with the least amount of points during the regular season, 58 and 82 games. Of course, the draft lottery didn't quite go their way. Of course, they still drafted second, were able to land Leo Carlson, who's expected to be, you know, a franchise cornerstone for the Anaheim Ducks. They added the likes of Kalorna Gudis in free agency. I do think this team is going to be better than they were this past season, but I don't think it's going to be some massive improvement where, you know, they're in the wild card hunt or anything like that. In my opinion, this is an organization that's still relatively early in the rebuild. I'm expecting them to be a bottom five team in the NHL once again, so that's why I have them in the basement tier. The kind Coyotes were not even a bottom five team in the league this past season. Points wise, they just missed out on being in the bottom five. They were six, but I think they were a little bit better than a lot of people expected them to be. And in my opinion, this is a team that vastly improved over the offseason, acquiring the likes of Sean Dursey, Jason Zucker, Alex Kerfoot, Matt Dumba, and you have to factor in that Logan Cooley signed his ELC and is expected to play a big part on the team this season. I'm not going to get ahead of myself and say that I think this is going to be a team that's in the wild card hunt all season long, but I do feel like looking at this roster on paper, this is a team that should be competitive on most nights. I'm expecting the Coyotes to finish somewhere in the range of 24th to 20th place league wide. The Boston Bruins, I'm going to go ahead and put them in the wild card team tier, coming off of a season in which they were the best regular season team in NHL history, and then of course floundered in the playoffs, but still that regular season was something special. This offseason, the roster has gotten significantly worse. I don't think there's any sugarcoating that. Notable departures include the likes of Krejci and Bergeron, who both retired, Taylor Hall, who was sent to Chicago in a cap dump, Tyler Bertuzzi signed in Toronto, Orlov signed in Boston, Hathaway signed in Philly. I do believe they are going to remain competitive. The Bruins definitely don't strike me as a team that's just going to roll over, so that's why I have them in the wildcard tier, but I would be genuinely surprised if they finish with one of the top three spots in the Atlantic Division. The Buffalo Sabres are up next. I'm going to go ahead and put them in the wildcard tier along with the Boston Bruins. The Buffalo Sabres were one of the best stories in in the league this past season, they took a massive step forward, missing out on the playoffs by just one singular point. And this is a team that should just be getting started by average age at the end of this past season. They had the second youngest roster in the league. I think there's an argument to be made that maybe they even belong in the playoff team tier. But for me, I'm going to keep my expectations in check, have them in the wildcard tier here. I do have my questions about their goaltending situation. I know Devin Levi looked good down the stretch for the Buffalo Sabres to finish out this past season, and he's expected to to be the man in net in Buffalo for a very long time. This is a team that obviously has playoff aspirations based on what we saw last season, and that is a lot to put on a rookie goaltender. I kind of wish Buffalo maybe went out and got a more solidified veteran starter to help ease Levi into the NHL. The Calgary Flames are up next, and for me, this is kind of a tough one. Obviously, they're coming off of a very disappointing season. They missed the playoffs, and I think it's safe to say that on paper, the roster has gotten worse over the offseason. So just by that logic, maybe you can make the argument that they should be in the mediocre tier. For me personally, I'm going to go ahead and put them as a wildcard team along with Boston and Buffalo. Last season was honestly fascinating for the Calgary Flames. I remember towards the end of the season during a Flames game, they showed a graphic of all these stats and it was like they hit the most posts in the league. They had the most one goal losses, the most losses when out shooting their opponent by 10 or more, all these kinds of crazy stats. And they still only missed the playoffs by two points. They finished the regular season with more points than the Florida Panthers who made the Stanley Cup finals out of the Eastern Conference. I'm expecting a bounce back season from the Flames, so that's why I have them in the wildcard tier. However, if the season starts off slow and they decide to move on from guys like Elias Lindholm and Noah Hannafin, who are in the final years of their contracts, then I could definitely see, you know, me putting them in the wildcard tier age pretty poorly. The Carolina Hurricanes are up next, and I'm going to go ahead and put them in the Stanley Cup contenders tier. I believe this is where I put them last off season when I made this video. They were my president's trophy pick when I did my award predictions. I'm very high on this Hurricane 
Hurricanes team. They're coming off of a really good season. They finished second in the entire league, only behind the Boston Bruins. They lost a total of just three games through the first two rounds of the playoffs, and obviously there's a, probably a sour taste in the mouth of a lot of Hurricanes fans and a lot of people in the media because of how their season ended, getting swept by the Panthers in the conference finals. But at that point, I mean, the Panthers were just an absolute buzzsaw. They were amidst an incredible stretch after coming back from down 3-1 against the Boston Bruins. They beat the Leafs in five, and then of course swept the Hurricanes. They were on fire, but getting back to the Hurricanes, I feel like they've had a fantastic offseason. They were able to re-sign both their goaltenders in Auntie Ronta and Freddie Anderson. You bring in a legit top six winger in Michael Bunting and a legit top four defenseman in Dmitry Orlov. They're also getting Svechnikov back, who's expected to be ready for the start of the season. I think Carolina is going to be a juggernaut this year. Definitely a Stanley Cup contender, in my opinion. Going from one extreme to the next. Next up, we have the Chicago Blackhawks, who are, in my opinion, the furthest thing from Stanley Cup contenders. They're going in the basement here along with the Ducks. Yes, they have Connor Bedard, and they brought in Taylor Hall to play alongside Bedard, which I'm expecting to be a really fun duo, but still, that roster on paper looks awful. As much as I am expecting Connor Bedard to live up to the hype, I think he's the real deal, a franchise, you know, borderline generational talent. I don't care how good you are. As a rookie, I don't think anybody is capable of carrying this roster to the playoffs. This is a team that's still, in my opinion, in the very early stages of their rebuild. Now, yes, getting a prospect the caliber of Bedard does accelerate a rebuild, but not by this much. They're not anywhere close to a playoff team. The Colorado Avalanche are up next. I'm going to go ahead and put them in the playoff team tier. I'm sure there's a good handful of people out there that would put them as Stanley Cup contenders, but for me personally, based on what I saw from them last season, I just can't do it. They lost in the first round to the Seattle Kraken. Sure, they had the star power advantage in that series, but Seattle just had so much more depth, and I do still expect depth to be a little bit of an issue for the Colorado Avalanche this season. Sure, they went out and got guys like Ryan Johansson and Ross Colton and Miles Wood, but they also lost some key pieces as well. JT Comfer, Evan Rodriguez, both left in free agency. Same with Lars Eller. They traded New Hook to the Montreal Canadiens, but that's kind of what led to them getting Ross Colton, which I do believe is an upgrade. I just don't think you can say that on paper, this is a team that got better during the offseason. They're going to be without their captain, Landeskog, again for the entirety of the season, so I'm kind of expecting them to have a year similar to the one that they just had. I don't put them up there, you know, with the best of the best in terms of legit Stanley Cup contenders at this point. Next up, we have the Columbus Blue Jackets. They're going to go in the mediocre tier for me. They were in the basement of the NHL this past season, finishing just one point ahead of the Anaheim Ducks for last place in the entire league. I really can't see them being anywhere close to as bad as they were this past season. They added the likes of Damon Severson and Ivan Provorov. They also drafted Adam Fantilli with the third overall pick. In the last two months, they've definitely made big strides towards being a much, much more competitive team. They also dealt with an abundance of injuries to key players this past season, so you have to imagine they're going to be a lot healthier this year, fingers crossed. I'm expecting to see a much improved Blue Jackets team from what we saw last season, but I wouldn't quite put them in that wildcard tier just yet. The Dallas Stars, definitely going to go ahead and put them in the playoff team tier along with the Colorado Avalanche. They were a top five team in the Western Conference this past season. The Stars certainly haven't had a very busy offseason. They lost Max Domi in free agency, but then made, in my opinion, one of the best free agent signings of the entire summer, signing Matt Duchesne to a one-year $3 million deal. I'm fully expecting the Dallas Stars to be one of the better teams in the Western Conference again. The Detroit Red Wings are up next, and as much as I want to put them in the wildcard tier, I just don't think they're on the same level as teams like Buffalo, Calgary, or Boston. So I'm going to stick them in mediocre for now, but I would say it's like upper mediocre. I do think they are way ahead of teams like Arizona and Columbus. Up until pretty much a week, a week and a half before the trade deadline this past season, the Red Wings were in the thick of the wildcard hunt, but then of course they decided to move out Bertuzzi and Philip Hronik. You have to factor that in. Those guys aren't going to be there for the Red Wings at all this season, and sure they made a lot of improvements during this offseason, to break it being the biggest one, but this is a team that definitely still has a lot of holes. You know, top end elite talent being one of those holes. The potential of seeing D pairings like Ben Sherratt and Justin Hall and Shane Gosses Bear and Justin Hall scares the hell out of me. I also have my questions about the goaltending as much as I like Vili Huso and he started off really well last season in his first year with the Red Wings, but he was very inconsistent. And when you look at his numbers as a whole on the year, 
pretty bad. So we'll see what happens. I hope I'm wrong, of course, but for now, I think the Red Wings belong in the mediocre tier, but, you know, a little bit above, you know, teams like Arizona and Columbus. The Edmonton Oilers, I'm going to go ahead and put them in the Stanley Cup contenders tier. They finished just two points back of Vegas for the first place in the Western Conference this past regular season. They beat the Los Angeles Kings in the first round, of course, lost to Vegas in the second round, who ultimately ended up winning the Stanley Cup. The Oilers have had a relatively quiet offseason. I don't think they really did anything that's going to move the needle too much one way or the other, but I do like the one-year bet on Connor Brown coming off of a season in which he barely played due to injury. They're bringing back basically the same team they had last year, and in my opinion, last year, they were legit Stanley Cup contenders. I mean, they lost to the Stanley Cup winners in the second round, so I'm putting Edmonton in the Stanley Cup contender tier for now. The Florida Panthers are up next the team that Vegas beat in the Stanley Cup Finals, and I think Florida belongs in the wildcard team tier. They just barely squeaked into the playoffs this past season by the skin of their teeth. I think recency bias is going to play a big factor in how a lot of people assess the Florida Panthers heading into next season because of the run they went on in the playoffs, but I honestly wouldn't be surprised at all if this team missed. I mean, their blue line without Montour and Ekblad to start the season is going to be atrocious. You never really know what to expect from Sergei Bobrovsky. He can be a world beater like he was in the playoffs or he can be a non-option as a starter. You never know. Moving on now to the Los Angeles Kings. I'm going to go ahead and put them in the playoff team tier along with Colorado and Dallas. The Los Angeles Kings have now had two consecutive seasons where they finish as a top three team in the Pacific Division. I don't think we can really call this a young up-and-coming team anymore. This is a team that's here. They're an established playoff team in the West. It's unfortunate that they ran into Connor McDavid and Leon Dreisaitl in the first round two years in a row, but based on their current roster and how they're set up for the future, I expect the Kings to be a perennial playoff team for quite some time. I am a little bit worried about their goaltending situation. Phoenix Copley and Cam Talbot doesn't sound like the greatest one-two punch in net, but if those two can just at the very least give the Kings serviceable goaltending, then I think they're in a good position to make the playoffs for the third consecutive season. The Minnesota Wild, I think I'm going to go ahead and put them in the playoff team category as well. They were third place in the Central Division this past season, and while I do think on paper they have gotten worse over the offseason, I don't think it's by a significant amount. And they have young guys on the roster who are going to continue to get better to hopefully make up for some of those losses. You know, Kalen Addison is still improving. Matt Boldy is an absolute beast. Hopefully Marco Rossi can crack the roster full time this year. He's obviously a very talented young prospect. I'm expecting the Wild to make the playoffs again. A lot of it is because I just can't really see any other team in the Central overtaking them for one of those three spots in the Central Division. You know, Winnipeg, Nashville, St. Louis. I don't really think any of those teams are on Minnesota's level. The Montreal Canadiens are up next, and I'm going to put them in the basement tier. However, I do expect them to be better than teams like Anaheim and like Chicago. I think on paper, the roster has the potential to maybe surprise some people, but similar to the other two teams sharing the basement tier with Montreal right now in Chicago and Anaheim, I think Montreal is still pretty early on in the rebuilding process. I do think they have a good young core there, but I don't think they're on the level or as far along as a team, say for an example, like Detroit, who I have in the mediocre tier. So that's kind of why I'm putting Montreal in the basement again. The Nashville Predators are up next, a team that just barely missed out on the playoffs this past season. I'm going to go ahead and put them in the mediocre tier. I think they've had a very interesting offseason, you know, moving on from Ryan Johansson, buying out Matt Duchesne, and then signing veterans like Luke Shen, Ryan O'Reilly, and Gustav Nyquist. I kind of thought Barry Trotz was going to take this team into a full-on rebuild, but it's clear based off of the moves he's made so far this offseason that that's not the case. I think this is a team that wants to remain competitive, and I do think they will be a competitive team, but looking at this roster, I just don't really view them as a legit playoff threat in the West. So that's why I have them in the mediocre tier. Next up, we have the New Jersey Devils. Maybe this is a little bit premature, but I am putting them in the Stanley Cup contenders tier. They are coming off of a massive breakthrough season where they finally came out of this rebuild and took that next step, not just to becoming a playoff team, but becoming a powerhouse. They had 113 points during the regular season. And despite the fact that they're a young team and most of that core was making their first playoff appearance together, they did not look afraid of the moment. They made relatively easy work of the New York Rangers in the first round. I know a lot of people actually picked the Rangers to beat the Devils in the first round despite the fact that the Devils were the higher seed, myself included. Just can't say enough good things about this New Jersey Devils team, and they're just getting started. I also believe they've had a great offseason, you know, adding a top-line winger in Tyler Toffoli. Guys like Simon Nemich and Luke Hughes are expected to push for roster spots next season. The Devils are really just getting started, and I think they're going to run the Eastern Conference for a long time. Next up, we have the New York Islanders, who made the playoffs 
this past season as a wildcard team lost to the Canes in the first round. I'm going to go ahead and put them in the wildcard tier. I expect them to, you know, be in the wildcard hunt again next season, just like they were this past season. They haven't had a really busy offseason at all. Didn't make any notable additions. Didn't really lose anyone all that significant. I mean, Zach Parise scored 20 goals last year and he's yet to resign, but they're basically bringing back the exact same team. You're going to have Bo Horvat for the entire season as opposed from just the trade deadline, you know, into the playoff run. I think they have one of the absolute best goaltenders on the planet in Sorokin. So anytime you have him in net, you're going to have a chance to win. I'm fully expecting them to be in the wildcard hunt all year long. The New York Rangers are up next, and I'm going to go ahead and put them in the playoff team tier. Last year when I made this video, I had them as Stanley Cup contenders, but I only want to have two teams from each conference in the Stanley Cup contender tier. And as you can see, I already have two from the East in there in Carolina and New Jersey. So that knocks the Rangers down to the playoff team tier. I'm still expecting the Rangers to be a very good team. Despite not having much cap space at all, they made some solid signings with what they had this offseason, you know, getting guys like Eric Gustafson and Blake Wheeler for very cheap. In my opinion, the top three seeds in the Metro division are set in stone. Barring something drastic happens, I cannot see any other team in the Metro taking over, you know, New Jersey, Carolina, or New York for one of those top three spots. The top of the Metro division is absolutely stacked, and the crazy part is I don't think any of those three teams in New York, New Jersey, or Carolina are going anywhere anywhere anytime soon. The Ottawa Senators are up next, and for me, I'm putting them in the wildcard tier. Where I'm at with Ottawa is I think they're in the same tier as the Buffalo Sabres in the Atlantic Division. I think both of those teams are slightly ahead of the Red Wings in terms of how far along they are in the rebuild and how close they are to being in contention. The Senators have a legit superstar in Tim Stutzler. Their top six is fantastic. A lot of top-end talent on that team. They have a three-headed monster on the blue line with Thomas Shabbat, Jake Sanderson, and Jacob Chikrin as long as Jonas Corbisalo can give them, you know, at the very least average level goaltending, I'm expecting Ottawa to be right in the thick of the playoff race. The Philadelphia Flyers definitely going down in the basement tier. They were actually a little bit better than I thought they were going to be this past season. I fully expected them to be in contention for that first overall draft pick. The Flyers are really just entering their rebuild. Danny Breer, in my opinion, in his first offseason as Flyers GM has done a really good job, took a lot of steps towards, you know, really just tearing it down, sent Kevin Hayes to St. Louis. They got Got out from under the Tony D'Angelo contract. In my opinion, Breer did really well in that Ivan Provorov three-team deal as well. This is a team that's gotten worse by design. I love the fact that they finally have some direction, and I feel like a lot of Flyers fans would agree with me on that. The Pittsburgh Penguins are up next, and I'm going to go ahead and put them in the wildcard team tier this past season. They missed the playoffs for the first time in, what was it, 16 years, I believe? But the Penguins just aren't going to roll over and enter a rebuild because they missed the playoffs after one year. Kyle Dubas, in his first offseason at the helm in Pittsburgh, has been very very aggressive, bringing in guys like Ryan Graves, Riley Smith, Lars Eller, and obviously the big one, Eric Carlson in that massive trade. I'm super excited to watch Eric Carlson on the same power play as the likes of Crosby, Malkin, and Gensel. I think the Penguins could be a lot of fun. Don't think they're a playoff lock by any means, especially with, you know, how I said the top three teams in the Metro I feel like are set in stone with the Rangers, Devils, and Hurricanes, but at the very least, I think the Penguins definitely are going to be in the thick of the wildcard hunt. The San Jose Sharks, I gotta put them in the basement tier. This past season, they finished just two points ahead of the Anaheim Ducks for last place in the entire league, and, you know, as we all know, they just traded the reigning Norris Trophy winner. Without a doubt, this is a team that's going to be in contention for that first overall draft pick again. It's probably gonna be a really long couple years for Sharks fans, as they are still in the very early stages of the rebuild. The Seattle Kraken, I feel like a lot of people may disagree with me on this one, but I'm gonna go ahead and put them in the wildcard tier as well. They just had a 100-point season, you know, made the playoffs in just their second second season in the league, but they had a lot of guys that had career years this past season. I think we may see a little bit of regression from Seattle. That's not to say they're going to be bad. I still think this is going to be a good team, but I definitely wouldn't call them a playoff lock, and that's kind of where I'm at with the teams that I put in the playoff team tier. The St. Louis Blues, I'm going to go ahead and put them in the mediocre tier. They were a mediocre team this past season, and I don't expect that to change heading into this season. Sure, they added Kevin Hayes, but aside from that, didn't really do too much. I I was definitely expecting them to trade one or two of the three first round draft picks that they had and make a splash getting, you know, maybe a young already established player. That wasn't the case though. They used all three of their first round picks to select prospects. You also have to keep in mind that they're not going to have half a season worth of O'Reilly, Tarasenko, Achari, and Barbashev and those guys. The Blues definitely have a solid core of forwards there with Robert Thomas, Jordan Kyrou, and Pavel Buchnevich, but this is a team that I just don't view as a legit playoff threat this season. The Toronto Maple Leafs, a lot of roster turnover, a lot of 
of changes this offseason. You know, Brad Tree Living being brought in as the GM, a ton of departures in free agency, including the likes of Michael Bunting, Ryan O'Reilly, Nola Chari, Justin Hall, Alex Kerfoot, Luke Shen as well, and I'm sure there's a couple more I'm missing, but they also made some big splashes in free agency, signing Max Domi and Tyler Bertuzzi, who I think are going to be amazing fits in Toronto's top six. I feel like a lot of people are kind of divided on if the Leafs got better or worse this offseason. What I can say is I think their depth on the blue line took a little bit of a hit and got worse, but man, after signing Domi and Bertuzzi, what they can do with that top nine, it looks maybe the best it ever has with this, you know, core four era. Oh yeah, and by the way, I should have mentioned, I'm putting the Leafs in playoff team tier. Even if they did get a little bit worse this offseason, I don't think this is a team that's going to be in danger of missing the playoffs or anything. I'm expecting them to be probably the best team in the Atlantic division. The Vancouver Canucks are up next, and for me, this is a little bit of a tough one. They were definitely mediocre this past season, but I think we're going to see a little bit of improvement. I'm going to put them in the wildcard tier. I think they're going to be at least in the hunt for one of those wildcard spots in the Western Conference. Not saying they're going to make it, but I think they're going to be in contention. I'm expecting a bounce back season from Thatcher Demko. I mean, he's too good not to. I feel like the Vancouver Canucks have made some sneaky good signings so far this offseason. You know, Teddy Bluger, Ian Cole, and Pew Suter. All three of those guys should help the Vancouver Canucks penalty kill, which was absolutely atrocious this past season. Moving along, we have the Vegas Golden Knights. I'm sure a lot of you saw this coming. They're going to be the fourth and final team I put in the Stanley Cup contenders here. I mean, it'd be kind of cruel not to put them there. They just won the Stanley Cup, and yeah, maybe they got a little bit worse this offseason, you know, having to move out Riley Smith in a cap dump, but aside from Smith, they're bringing back basically the same roster that just won them the Stanley Cup. I don't see any reason why they aren't going to be a legit threat to win it again. The Washington Capitals are up next, and I gotta put them in the mediocre tier. They were mediocre this past season, finished with just 80 points. They didn't do a ton this offseason to really make me think that they're gonna get back into playoff contention, so when it comes to the Washington Capitals, they're definitely in the mediocre tier for me. And now finally, finishing out the video with the Winnipeg Jets, who I am putting in the wildcard tier. They made the playoffs this past season as the second wildcard team in the Western Conference. Some pretty big changes for Winnipeg so far this offseason, buying out former captain Blake Wheeler, and then obviously the Pierre Luc Dubois trade, and if you guys have been subscribed to the channel even just for the past couple of months and seen anything I've said on the Dubois trade or heard, sorry, then you probably know that I really like what Winnipeg did in that trade. I think they did well. This is a team that, in my opinion, especially since they haven't moved on from guys like Scheifele or Hellebuck yet, should definitely still be in a position to compete for a playoff spot. So that is going to wrap up today's video ranking all 32 NHL teams heading into the 2023-24 NHL season. Like I mentioned at the start, there will be a pinned comment down below with a link to make one of these tier lists for yourself. If you do that, be sure to screenshot it and tweet at me. I want to know what your guys' list would look like. If you enjoyed this video and you want to see more tier lists as we head towards opening night on October 7th, I believe, then be sure to leave this video a like. That is the best way to let me know that you enjoyed. And lastly, if this was your first time checking out the channel and you want more NHL content just like this all year round. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and I'll talk to you all soon.